Sponsored by RxCardClub.com. Get a free prescription drug card and save up to 85% on prescription drugs. RxCardClub.com will NSC relinquish their captaincy to NSAs. That was how the Paralympic Council of Malaysia, PCM, President Dotuk Seri Megot Sharaman Zairuddin described the Malaysian contingent's failure to meet their four gold medal target in the recently concluded Paris Paralympic Games. President of PCM since 2019, Megot reportedly accused the National Sports Council, NSC, of meddling in the management of the contingent, creating a situation of two captains in one ship. He claimed PCM had faced similar issues across four events, the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics, the 2022 Hangzhou Asian Paragames, the 2023 Phnom Penh Paraasean Games, and the Paris Paralympics. Malaysia finished 42nd overall, winning two gold, two silver, and one bronze medal. The two gold medals were secured by para badminton champion Chia Lai Kao in the men's singles SU5 and powerlifter Bonnie Bunyao Gustin in the men's 72 kilograms category. Abdul Latif Romali clinched silver in the men's long jump T20, intellectual disability, while Ziad Zorkfli took silver in the shot putt F20, intellectual disability. The bronze came through Eddie Bernard in the men's 100 meters T44, physical disability. NSC Director General Abdul Rashid Yekub hit back by saying Megot's statement was reckless, extreme, and hasty. Although Chef de Mission Dotukar Subramanian quashed the allegation of being bullied by the NSC, it is time for the government agency to conduct an introspective reflection, take a step back and have an honest and open discussion with PCM, or even the Olympic Council of Malaysia, OCM, custodian of all multi sports games for the able bodied. The sports family understand NSC's role, clearly defined by the NSC Act 1971, which is to coordinate the high-performance sports in the country. With NSC using taxpayers' money to fund Malaysian sports, the agency are having two bites of the apple by undercutting the national sports associations, NSAs, by making the corporate sector their sponsors as well. The federal government has taken its share from various taxes but NSC continue to entice the corporate sector to contribute to their coffers, while the NSAs struggle to do so. Perhaps NSC may consider reverting to its rightful role of being the facilitator of elite sports and supporter of the NSAs. While NSC continue to grow stronger in terms of their workforce, the NSAs remain reliant on aging volunteers with little chance of attracting the youth to join them. NSC suffer from the perception they are taking over the role of associations due to their financial muscle. In making the call for NSAs to be more independent, NSC's centralized planning system and implementation of programs for sports is not helping at all. As often argued by the former OCM secretary the late Dotuk C. Kok Chi, NSC cannot and should not continue as both a funding and an implementing agency. It is a conflict of interest that can and may lead to corrupt practices and abuse of power.